What up everyone? This is Mike Gross at youtube.com slash mg free guitar lessons. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I appreciate it. Leave comments. If you have questions on the video, leave it on my comments section of this video and I'll clear it all up for you. And if, if you really feel like being really super nice, if you'd spread the word to anyone you know that wants to learn guitar, to head on over to my channel. And today we're going to do a lesson from Judas Priest. And the song is Breaking the Law. I started playing in the 80s. This was one of the first songs that I learned this in Living After Midnight. You know, this was the era of Scorpions, Maiden Priest, Malmsteen, all that stuff. It was a really, really fun era. I was lucky to, to grow up playing guitar in that area in my life. So anyways, uh, we're going to break all this down. I'm going to play the first section of this, and then I'll show you what's going on with it. Not a super hard song, but if you're a beginner, you know, it may be a little tricky. So anyways... Here's how it starts. Judas Priest breaking the law. Okay, and what happens? Uh, just like in my last video with Iron Maiden, Wasted Years, two guitar players, K.K. Downing and Glenn Tipton. Uh, they played different parts. One, one played the one I showed you, another one played an octave higher, like a... So together you got this really kind of fat sound when that's going on. But we're only one player, right? So we got to pick one. So we'll stick with the, the bottom end one. If you're jamming with someone or doing the song as a cover tune in your band or whatever, you're going to want to, uh, you're definitely going to want to play the lower one as opposed to the high one. Um, actually this was a request from uh, one of my subscribers and I'm sorry, someone that was from another country. And I don't remember your name, but uh, anyways, this is for you, bud. The breakdown. This is in the key of A minor. It's actually using the first three notes of the A minor scale. And it's open A, second fret A with your first finger, and third fret A with your middle finger. That's the fingers I'm using. You can use different ones if you want. You're going to go. It's three times of that. But you got to get the beat. That's where people sometimes struggle. It's not this. You got to try and feel that beat. Da, 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 da. Then we go up to an F note. This is first fret on the low E string. From there, and I'm using my first finger. That's the one you're going to want to use. And then third finger fret three on the low E, and then open A. So here's what that sounds like. Two times on that. With the beat you gotta get. And then third fret E, I'm doing with my third finger. And then I'm gonna drop to third fret A with my third finger, and then second fret A with my middle finger. So that would be. And there's a little little trick I want to show you guys. It's I call it a pivot. Maybe that's the actual term for it. What I know, I'm just a guitar teacher, right? But it's important. I mean, with Maiden, they, if you got to shift to the next string really quick, prime example, and I'm not going to steer too far off track because I know you guys want to learn this priest lesson, but Maiden will do stuff like... Um, with this finger, it's... I'm not really lifting it to go to the next one. I don't have time to do that. So you kind of flatten your knuckle out. And that allows you to get there a lot quicker. And the thing is, especially if you got to go right back to the other note, then you just shift it back up. But it's a good technique, not just for metal players. Um, so try to apply that. You, you want to think that way when you're doing this. Um, so we had, let me play the, the whole riff we just did, the intro. <laughs> Flatten that finger right there. And you know what I'm going to say next, right? Take a guess. Starts with an S. Subgroup that and just repeat it. And then, I think you guys will pick this one up pretty quick. It's all single notes. The hardest part is probably the beat and the shift with your third finger. Okay, the vocals come in next. So what you want to do there is he's playing an A5 power chord. 
Open A, second fret D with your first finger. Purposely lean that first finger flat. Don't go straight on the tip of it because you want to possibly catch the next string on the second fret or at least be muting it. This is metal. It's aggressive. It's aggressive. So you got to be able to hit this stuff hard. And if you're not muting, it'll sound like this. So, which sounds like, never mind. I won't say who that sounds like. Anyways, go. Okay, let that ring. Three, four. So I'm using an A5, a C5, and a G5, all power chords. So moving to the C5, the next part. Do like a, two palm mutes on the open A. And then you go to the C5 power chord, 3rd fret A, 5th fret D. So it's... So, two, three, four. And then, like a mute with your left hand, just barely lift up the pressure with this hand to go. It's not a huge part, it doesn't stand out. You don't, unless you're a guitar teacher or someone's been playing it all, you won't even hear it. But I want to show the little things. So we have... Right after the... Then we go to 3rd fret E, 5th fret A, that's a G5 power chord. We jump back to the A5 power chord that you just learned. The first one there, so. And then you just do that again, double dots, we talked about that before, it means repeat. So repeat that. We're going to move up to F5, 8A, 10D. Hit those two strings. Careful not to hit the other ones unless they're muted. Two, three, four. It's called a whole note. It gets four counts. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. So those are all whole notes in there. So the next one we go to is third and fifth fret, same strings, A and D. All this is going to be A and D string. Two, Back to the F5 that we were just on. Two, three, four. Move it a half step flat. That puts you at seven nine. That's an E5. That's not a whole note. It'd be a dotted half note or a half note. It'd be a half note and then you hit it again. Uh, I've seen them play it a few different ways. I mean, you can go whatever Rob Halford says. Or you can accent. You know, some action in your life, or whatever he says. Accent the guitar with it, or just let it ring. And then hit it again, and exaggerate the slide. Take your right hand, boom, karate chop to stop that slide so it doesn't go. You got in that slide somewhere, right? If not, it's just hanging out there. Ah, my back, sorry. So, we're going. Okay, after that, we're, we're moving into the chorus. Sorry, I had to do it. So, you're going to palm mute the A string. If you have to count it, if you're a big Priest fan, you probably won't even have to. But, I know not everyone's going to be able to do this without having to count it. So, I want all you guys to be able to pick this up. So one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three. Well, four eight twelve, thirteen fourteen fifteen palm mutes on that A string. That's what's a little weird about it because it's an odd count. It's not an even, even number here. The cool thing though, it's on the open A. You can be getting your first finger ready to bar fret fourteen on the D and the G. So you can go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. You'll hit it, let it ring a second, and then do an exaggerated slow descending slide. Until right around the seventh, sixth, or fifth fret. Don't let it slide all the way down here. You don't have enough time to do that. Right between five and seven on your frets, um, and then you gotta go back to repeating it. So.
So the second one, see, I play it by feel because I've listened to Priest for so long, and it's just the song stuck in my head, the beat, the rhythm. The second one, <laughs> I have to count it right now because I don't know how many times it is. But when you've jammed, especially you jam with drummers, you get to where you don't have to count all the time. But if you don't know and you're uncertain, always count it. it you won't always have to, it'll become second hand. <laughs> Eleven times. Yep. And then, so it'll be eleven of them. And then you'll do the bar again on the fourteenth fret, D and G, two times now. But you gotta, you don't wanna go, you wanna go. So with your right hand, do the karate chop here to mute it out. Dun 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 dun. And then thirteen times. I'm back on the A. I probably miscounted that. So let me play that whole part slow down. If you want to try to follow me on it, you can too. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then uh, it goes back to the verse, which is the second part that you learned. So no sense in going over that again. Just rewind it and watch the second part you learned in this video. Um, there's two more parts. It's the rhythms to the solo. It's pretty simple. We will do some solos down the road, man. I'm excited about doing some leads. But I really I feel it's important to build that foundation. And it's kind of hypocritical a little bit, I have to say, because my first year of learning guitar was, I'd say, 1982, that I kind of got serious with it. Um, I just was like a kid in a candy store. I was learning, you know, Randy Rhodes was just huge. I find out who Yangry Malmsteen is, and Steve Vai, George Lynch, Warren Demartini, um, Steve Morse, I mean, all these, Steve Lukather, all these shred players, Brad Gillis, Jeff Watson, <laughs> goes on and on, Steve Lynch. Um, so I didn't learn all my rhythms first. I learned rhythms and little pieces to songs, but then I was so inspired I wanted to start learning guitar solos, so I was learning rhythms and guitar and bass and drums and all that. But I want to give you guys something to jam with. If you don't have complete songs, that's why all of my lessons up to here, almost all of them are all complete songs. But leads are coming and I will teach you guys solos, man, to to whatever, you know, cemetery gates, it doesn't matter, bark at the moon. So, don't get bummed out. Rhythms are, they're fun, man. If you have no rhythm, you don't have anything. Except uh, icing with no cake. Okay, enough of my chatter. But let's go back to uh, the rhythm behind the solo. It goes. <laughs> the pinch harmonics. Um, real simple here, 2A, 4D. Hit those two strings, go to A5, which is open A, fret 2 on the D, and hit it twice. And then right back, start it over. And then it'll be two times on that A5 chord, on the fourth one through. And then you go up to 5A, 7D. I don't even know if this is a, a solo behind here. It's like sirens and Rob Halford doing his amazing high screams. Um, but you'll go. Move that a step and a half sharp. Takes you up to 810. Move that up one string each to 810. Get that. And then back to 57 AD again. And then you go 810. So step and a half up. And then a whole step sharp. Repeat all that. So. Okay, 
So that's that's it, man. Judas Priest breaking the law. I will see you guys next time. If you're not subscribed, it'd be awesome, man. If you guys don't mind, it, the little button's right up there, man. You'll see it. Click subscribe. Um, I definitely appreciate comments and very importantly, um, if you have any questions. I don't want you to go away from these lessons like, man, I wish you would have explained that better. If I'm not explaining something good enough, let me know. Or if you're just not getting it, let me know. And we'll bring it to you and make sure it's clear. Just put that on my comments page. Okay? So, until next time, rock on, guys. <laughs>